Several videos and photos circulated on social media indicate that Russia is sending T-62 tanks to Ukraine. These tanks are being transported to Russian-occupied Maritopol in southern Ukraine. These are 60 years old machines and seem to have been shifted from cold storage to the front lines. This is an interesting development since we know that even Russia's most advanced operational tank, T-90M, which is an upgraded version of the T-90 tank, has been knocked out on several occasions. Many social media users have been mocking this development. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why Russia is sending ancient T-62 tanks to Ukraine. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Guardio. Scams these days are getting pretty sophisticated, and even most tech-savvy users can't tell if a site is genuine or a phishing scam. There's a constant risk of falling into a trap, and this is where Guardio comes in. Guardio provides real-time browsing protection that can detect threats before they cause harm and keep your information safe. It'll save you from phishing sites, email scams, tech support scams, annoying push notifications, and malicious extensions that could be altering your browser settings. Run a free security scan in a few clicks. Takes only 30 seconds. Guardio has also just added a new feature that blocks remote access Trojans. With Guardio, you can enjoy worry-free browsing as it's reliable as well as affordable protection. It's available worldwide and more than a million users are using it. Guardio is providing the Defense Updates community with an additional 10% off on yearly and monthly subscription plus five free family members. So why wait? Click the link in the description and begin a seven-day free trial to try real-time protection. No charge during the free trial, no commitment, money-back guarantee. The T-62 is a Soviet-era main battle tank that was first produced in 1961. As a further development of the T-55 series, the T-62 retained many similar design elements of its predecessor, including low profile and thicker turret armor. By the late 1950s, Soviet commanders realized that the T-55's 100mm gun was incapable of penetrating the frontal armor of newer Western tanks such as the Centurion and M48 Patton with standard armor-piercing shells. This set the stage for the development and subsequent production of T-62. It was the USSR's most important tank until the T-72 entered service in 1969. The 41-ton tank has a 115mm main gun. In contrast with previous tanks, which were armed with rifled tank guns, the T-62 was the first production tank armed with a smoothbore tank gun that could fire APF-SDS rounds at higher velocities. It has steel armor. Thousands of T-62s went into storage as newer models saw serial production. Some reports suggest that around 2,500 are present. Many of them are simply lying in rows in large outdoor complexes and are likely to be in bad shape. Out of these, the working examples are now being put into duty. Ukrainian forces have effectively used Western-supplied weapons like Enlaws and Javelin to destroy Russian tanks. This has played a key role in halting Russian armored thrust and even resulted in withdrawal from many parts. Most of the ATGMs that Ukraine is using, including the indigenous Stugna P, have armor penetration of around 800 millimeters. The front armor on the T-62 is the thickest, but it's only 242 millimeters. The hull sides are only 79 millimeters and the top is 31 millimeters. T-62 also has many other issues like vulnerable fuel and ammunition storage areas. Unlike modern Western tanks, Russian ones carry multiple shells within their turrets. For example, four rounds are placed in the turret of T-62s. This makes them highly vulnerable as even an indirect hit can start a chain reaction that explodes their entire ammunition store. Other problems include taking 20 seconds for the turret to rotate through a full 360 degrees. T-62s will be easy prey for highly motivated Ukrainian forces equipped with weapons designed to take on much more capable modern tanks. 
The T-62's smaller gun requires different ammo. This will further complicate Russian logistic issues. Not only this, to fire the 12.7mm machine gun, which is the secondary armament, the loader must be partially exposed, making him vulnerable to suppressive fire, and he must leave his main gun loading duties unattended. Technically, T-62 is an obsolete tank. It doesn't belong on the front lines of a modern battlefield. A senior U.S. defense official has stated, as per the latest U.S. military estimates, Russia has lost nearly 1,000 tanks and a not insignificant amount of personnel in its now three-month-long attack on Ukraine. We believe they've lost or rendered inoperable almost 1,000 of their tanks in this fight, the official told reporters, but noted that they still have a lot left available to them. Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby later said that the Russians continue to take casualties every single day in this war, which began on February 24th. He said, We know that they've lost not only soldiers, but they've lost a lot of equipment and weapons. They're expending a significant number of their cruise missile and precision-guided munitions inventory in this war. So we know that they're looking across the board at ways to try to resupply and replenish themselves. The general staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces has taken note of this and stated, As a result of losses during hostilities, the Russian enemy was forced to withdraw from storage T-62 Italian tactical groups that are being formed to be sent to Ukraine. Russia continues to lose armor at a high clip. It's estimated that about three to four tanks are destroyed each day. But Russia has one of the largest tank forces in the world, so while these losses are very high, this shouldn't alone lead to the induction of the old T-62s. So the problem seems to be that many of its newer tanks are not in good shape and can't be used in this conflict without repairs or maintenance. It's well known that Russian forces are facing shortages of components like chips needed in aircraft and tanks as Western sanctions are hindering imports. So a combination of high losses and the inability to repair T-64s, T-72s, T-80s, and T-90s is the reason the Ukrainians began observing T-62s arriving near the front lines. But this could lead to a vicious cycle since T-62 tanks are likely to see a higher attrition rate and result in quicker loss of crew. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.